So, was I wrong? In the last video, I essentially talked about NATO as a whole rather than the specific conflict. And I still stand by the fact that NATO is an imperialist force. It's ever expanding and it's now set its sights on China. Today it's Russia, tomorrow it is China. I hold my hands up. I was a skeptic when I thought about Russia invading Ukraine. But all the navel gazing towards the left from these so-called centrist and media hacks makes me wonder, well, we were obviously right on the Iraq war. We we're obviously right on many other interventions. So it's quite likely that we won't buy the bullshit from the mainstream media. I said in the last video that the media were mustering up some sort of sympathy for Ukraine. Obviously, the context is entirely different. Now troops are in Ukraine. I stand in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. But it doesn't mean that this isn't a tool used by the mainstream media in many other conflicts. So I still stand by that. In terms of NATO, as I said before, I still stand by the fact that NATO needs to be disbanded. It still has outlived its use. Putin is a right-wing autocrat. And despite all the media, despite a lot of these centrist hacks saying that the left somehow stands with Putin, that we're pro-Kremlin, is bollocks. You'll get a couple of handful of people on Twitter who might say something nice about Putin, but none of us support him. We've always spoken out against him. In fact, speaking of that, Stop the War, which is now a group which is vilified for the whole of the mainstream media. It's now in the political discourse, Stop the War is now some crank left organization. They've come out and said, this is wrong. This is wrong with Putin, what Putin's doing. 11 MPs put their signature on a statement from Stop the War, which essentially said nothing controversial. It just said that we oppose what Putin is doing. We oppose imperialism in all its forms. Whoever does it, imperialism is wrong, which is completely spot on if you ask me. Well, the whip has now said to those 11 left-wing MPs that if you don't remove your signature, you'll have the whip removed. And obviously the socialist camp campaign group who were principal for as much as 10 minutes, obliged. So now we have a scenario where opposing war, opposing imperialism, that's a, that's, a, that's a red line. That is a red line in the political debate. So stop the war, left MPs, people like myself who are anti-imperialist are now on the same side of Trump and Nigel Farage, according to these centrist liberal hacks, my mind blows why they're thinking like this. I actually think that briefcase Labour and the centrists are happy this is happening so they can just punch left. They can say, the left, you're all wrong now, but it doesn't change our opinion on war and imperialism. It doesn't make any difference to that. It just says that, okay, well, what we see is the hypocrisy from you. When it comes to European nations, all of us care, all of us stand in solidarity, but when it's brown nations further away, when it's Afghanistan and Iraq, who gives a fuck? So actually, all this does is prove our point even more, that people's perception, people's response to war and interventionism and, and, and invasions, they've got certain stipulations. If it's Ukraine, this is, this is wrong. If it's Iraq, who cares? And it's also quite funny that seeing people in the media who now support BDS. They now support economic sanctions, but obviously, of course, if it's Israel, oh, this is wrong. Solidarity with the people in Russia who are protesting and marching against the Russian government. I stand with you. It is extremely powerful message they're sending the government. But once again, we're seeing a lot of support from the whole of the commentariat. However, if those people over here protesting the government against war, well, they're just left-wing cranks. They just stop the war. Kremlin supporters. So for the whole of the media commentariat, the whole of the political elite, the pretext for war comes down to your agenda. What do I mean by that? Okay, well, no one talks about the human rights abuses in Saudi Arabia. Why? Well, because we've got really good economic relations with them. We've got arms deals going back and forth to Saudi Arabia, so we won't talk about that. Same with Israel-Palestine. It's so hard to speak up for Palestinians over there. Yet when you talk about it, you shout it down. When it comes to places like, as I said before, Iraq, Afghanistan, it's hard to talk about the foreign interventions over there. You're still seen as a crank lefty from the mainstream media. But the response is completely different when it comes to Ukraine. This is why we don't really believe what you're saying, because you're 
solid, your fake solidarity falls on deaf ears. We know your game, we know what you're up to. The government is now putting uh, flags or, or lights in front of Downing Street with a yellow and blue flag of Ukraine, but they've also denied visas to the Ukrainian people. In fact, 30, the total 30 visas have been granted for Ukrainians, but over 1,000 visas have been given to Russian oligarchs. So what do I think needs to happen? Well, as a principled anti-interventionist, it's a difficult one. I don't buy the fact that this is exactly like Iraq. It was clear the war in Iraq, it was based on lies, it was based on false evidence. Uh, intervening over there was much more about imperialism and profit. This is a little bit different and I can understand why people in Ukraine are desperate for help. But principally, I don't think we should have boots on the ground. What we should have though is sanctions. Now I know what you're thinking, everybody says sanctions. Proper sanctions. Italy have done a deal with the EU where they want to cut out luxury goods from the economic package or from the sanction package. So essentially they can still do trade with Gucci shoes and Chanel bags. We shouldn't be doing exemptions for big corporations to make their profits. We need to be going after the richest, the hardest, because that's where the power is at. Otherwise, sanctions are going to go the same way as they usually do, where the working class and the poor are hit the hardest. So we need strong sanctions, but proper sanctions. Sanctions where we hit their military. Sanctions where we hit the global corporations. Sanctions where we hit the autocrats, the oligarchs. We need to be banning visas to Russian oligarchs who come over here in London, buy houses, leave them empty, just to sell it off a profit. That's who we need to be hitting. So what do you think? Why don't you drop a comment below? Also, please like and share this video, and please, please subscribe to Turn Left. Thanks for watching.